Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Monsignor. We were having some work done in the fire loft, and uh, apparently we're having some trouble with the speakers, so we're going to have to just think of music in our minds. <laughs> uh, but as we gather, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather together today and prepare now to enter into our worship, let us begin as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you nourish and strengthen us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God and in the God. highest, and, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may obtain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Inasmuch as I am 
the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous, and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable, just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now disobeyed in, your, in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to be disobedience, and that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. emphasizing 
that Jesus, in this particular passage, recognizes, as does the disciples, that here is a woman who is not of their own ancestry, and yet is calling out. And in many of these instances, we see that the scriptures are trying to relate to us through Jesus' example that he shows compassion to these people and these representative communities to help us understand that the universal call to salvation is one in which Jesus begins with calling back the entire nation of Israel, but that the purpose and plan of God is to reconcile all people, all who are made in his image, back to him. And so, of course, tonight we see that, and as we reflect on this gospel, we can certainly understand that here is another example of such an instance. But I also think tonight, as we hear this particular gospel passage of the Canaanite woman whose daughter is afflicted with a demon, that we also have another very interesting thing to reflect upon that again cuts through uh, our own time and whatever our own tradition and whatever our own particular um, national denomination might be. What we see, what we see in tonight's gospel is a very important paradigm, I think, that helps us to understand how our prayer life and our reaching out to God must be persistent. And what I mean by that is, if we think about last weekend's gospel, where Jesus is walking on the water, and we see that he invites Peter, remember, to come out onto the water, and we recall that when Peter's faith starts to wane, he begins to sink. And remember, Jesus extends his hand and pulls Peter up. We sort of have a continuation of that theme about the importance of faith tonight in the gospel. Because what we see here is that the faith, the faith of this Canaanite woman is extremely strong. It's not faltering. Even unlike Peter's last week, it is not faltering. But what's interesting is three different times in this short gospel passage, her faith is driving her to ask this request of our Lord. And in it, we see that three different times she is somewhat denied or she is refuted, might be a better word that scripture scholars like to use. And we see that Jesus is refuting her not out of a lack of love or compassion or concern, but actually Jesus sees and understands and immediately recognizes how deep her faith is. And as he does so often in his public ministry and is recorded for us, he wants to make this a moment of great example, not only for those contemporary people, including his apostles and the other disciples gathered around him, but Matthew takes this into the treasury of his gospel for every generation of Christians to have in the text of sacred scripture for us to reflect upon and to be inspired by. And what Jesus is doing here is he is showing and demonstrating to all of us not only how deep of faith this Canaanite woman's uh, trust is in God, but what we see is that her persistence continues. And that her faith allows her to be persistent in calling out to Christ for help. And so it sets up a model for us as well in our own prayer life and in the way in which we look at life. And many times the challenges or the crosses or the difficulties, whatever we might want to call it, that comes our way. Jesus in the gospel is showing us that we too must be persistent. And sometimes just having faith is an important part of our the journey as disciples. But we also, through that faith, have to constantly invoke God for his help, for his assistance. We petition and call out to him. And Jesus is reminding us to say, don't become discouraged that if in your experience of the first cry, you may believe or feel that you are not heard. It is not that. 
But what Jesus in many instances is doing is trying to allow us to not only increase our own faith, but using sometimes our own experiences to be important opportunities and inspirations to others. And if we think about that in our own life, when we've been surrounded by people of faith, when we've witnessed people of faith who are persistent, who are persevere in their prayers, we might say, and of course the temptation is there, why are you continuing to pray? God hasn't heard your prayers. God isn't answering your prayers. Look, you've lost three children. Now you're going to lose the fourth. You lost your husband. You lost your brother. You know, that cancer's come back six times. Why are you continuing to pray? Don't you get it? And many times what God is doing is asking us to be witnesses to counter that, to say, no, I get it. God is there. God does respond according to his time, according to his will. And maybe, just maybe, God is using us like he is using this Canaanite women to make people who are even part of the community of Israel faith deeper because the Canaanite woman's faith is even stronger than many of those. So, my brothers and sisters, I would like to entertain tonight for our reflection that there's another little twist to this gospel that we can look at in the beautiful dimensions of its facets, and that is that this sets up for us a model, a model of constant prayer, a model of perseverance, and don't allow your faith to be weakened because what at first glance might seem to be an unanswered prayer or petition, but persevere. And in doing so, not only does the Lord hear us, but the Lord will also maybe use us to do miraculous things. Isn't it interesting, I find it fascinating in the gospel, that in many of the miracle stories, we want to see the miracle happening. And we are sometimes given great detail in the miracle. You know, the gentleman who throws the cane and stands up and walks, or the person who picks up his mat, or the, the mud on the eyes of the blind man, and all of a sudden he sees. What's interesting about tonight's gospel? The miracle that the woman was looking for was to have her child free from the grasp of the demonic possession. And what we have is simply the word, let it be done for you as you wish. And St. Matthew says, and the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. Was healed from that hour. We're almost saying, yeah, how did she heal? Did she convulse? Did she spin around? You know, give us some detail. Matthew's saying, man, Jesus says she's healed. I would contend and propose that maybe the greater miracle in here is the miracle that is set up for those around the woman who all of a sudden say, she has faith. And the miracle comes that those who counted her as an outcast, as not part of the family of God, as not a member of the community, are now saying, wow, not only did God hear her prayer, not only did Christ perform a miracle for her daughter, but she has gotten even more than us. She is a daughter as much as we are sons and daughters. So my dear brothers and sisters, Sometimes when we look around and we think about and try to contemplate what is miraculous, I often say that, as St. Thomas Aquinas would tell us, the miraculous is really what is facing us and looking at us directly. The miraculous is found sometimes in the daily working out of our lives, the daily instances that we see. The miraculous is really taking nature, what is part of our natural order and div div divinizing it and blessing it. Indeed, when we think about that, God equally blesses all of us and he shares those blessings in abundance. Sometimes the greater miracle that we need is the opening of our minds and our hearts to see it, to realize it, to believe it. as we profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was the incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified at the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Recalling the faith of the Canaanite woman in today's gospel, we lift our hearts to the Father with assurance that our prayers will be heard. For the church, may the grace and mercy of the Holy Spirit continue to strengthen her in faith and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For leaders of nations throughout the world, may God grant them a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For families, for families experiencing strife, may the peace of Christ bring an end to division and repair broken relationships. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For caregivers and counselors <coughs> and all who help to carry the cross of those who are ill or have sorrow, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For this faith community, may the Lord help us in using our gifts for his glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For the prayers of our parish family, listen to our parish book of intentions. For these prayers and all the prayers we hold close to our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For those who have died, especially Elizabeth Bruce, who passed away this week, and Paul and Anne Benko, all, and all the deceased members and benefactors of St. James Parish, along with all the names of those inscribed on the crosses displayed on our wall of remembrance. May they rest in heaven for all eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, hear the prayers we bring before you today, which we make through Christ our Lord. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever. And ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to this image on earth, we may merit also to be co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As we listed in our prayers of the faithful, I ask you to please remember the soul of our parishioner, Liz Bruce, and many of you knew Liz. Uh, she's very active here and very um, important part of our parish community and you know, she has been a great witness of courageous uh, battling she has been battling cancer for quite a while we commend her to the lord she died this past week and her funeral is going to be monday morning at 10 a.m here at saint james so we pray for her that god may now give her eternal rest and peace and pray in a special way for her family and for all who mourn her loss the lord be with you and with your spirit and may almighty god bless you the father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a good week, everyone.